Have you ever felt setbacks and wondered to yourself, how am I ever going to get to the next level of financial success, break through the situation and finally make it? So in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series, I will reveal to you the most underrated element that creates first generation faith-based millionaires starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting big. What's cracking, everybody? My new smart guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook, Illinois. Yes, I am back in Chicago. We uh, shot a Black Friday segment here this past Friday, and I want to encourage you, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe below, please, because we are looking to award a church, charity, or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of the squad, you, watchers and subscribers of the Seven Fears Squad Scripture Series, because we want to bless a church, charity, or nonprofit, $5,000 to help them help other people. Okay, let's get right into it. So what is this element? Not only will I share with you this element, I'm going to share with you three ways to incorporate this element in your life so therefore you can become a first-generation faith-based millionaire. This underrated element is gratitude. Yes, gratitude. I was inspired with this thought this past Thursday during Thanksgiving. What separates the rich from the poor? What helps those that are prosperous help the needy? And I discovered, wow, it's really Thanksgiving. It's a spirit of Thanksgiving. That is the that Jesus is the reason for the season that we are here not, as a season not to buy and to break through Best Buy lines and Macy's lines to become wealthy and successful, but to give that this spirit is because we believe in the faith that God sacrificed and gave His only begotten Son, so therefore you can have life. So therefore, let's talk about three ways to incorporate gratitude into your life. And sometimes it takes a hard conversation to have with people to help you realize that you're not so bad in life, in your business, in your finances, after all. So let's talk about number one. Gratitude reprograms your brain. Let's take a look at Scripture here, what it says here in Thessalonians Chapter 5, verse 18, it reads like this. Give thanks in all circumstances. Yes, it said all circumstances. Not just not the successful circumstances, not when your bills are finally paid, not when you have finally get a bonus, not when you finally get a job, but in the depths, in the points of your life where you feel that God has left you, give thanks. Give thanks to the point that it hurts and you even think that you're crazy. Just keep in mind, Having an attitude of gratitude allows you to fix your programming of your brain, allows you to fix the processes of what's broken, and therefore allows you to release profits into your life, into your business, into your personal checking account. The attitude of gratitude to give thanks in all things. Because when you reprogram your mind inside that word, you see the word gratitude. Inside that word gratitude, you see the word attitude. And my friends, if you think that attitude determines your altitude, well, the first area that you need to unlock and make sure you revisit the most underrated element is to invoke gratitude in your situation. See, what I've learned to come figure it out is that God wants to give you who is cheerful, who is happy, who in spite of their circumstances, you may not have much, but man, God wants to bless you. You see, that's God's heart. And when you look through your situation, what I discovered is when you're in the worst position, you, my friends, are actually in the best position to give thanks in all things. Like, Lord, what are you teaching me in this very moment? I'm very, very uncomfortable. But if you can look up, you can get up, as Les Brown says, and you can make most of the least that you have. And that's when God says, oh, you're making the most of the least, huh? Boom, here's a blessing. And next thing you know, a conversation comes your way. Our door opens uh, your way. A certain door needs to close your way. And next thing you know, God will then help you manifest His blessings and plans for you. Second one, people are attracted to a positive attitude. People are attracted to gratitude. People are attracted to those who have a positive sense of themselves because they just are fun people to be around. I mean, when's the last time you had a good time hanging around with somebody that was negative? Let me show you this clip. Even though I took it into a moment of hilarity, but here I am descending on my plane, and uh, this person was visiting their friends and family after a long time uh, in Dallas, and they haven't been to Chicago in a while, and their family member was actually in the wrong airport 
picking them up. <laughs> and they say, you know, this young lady, she is just going off on her family, showing up at the wrong airport. Here's a quick clip of what this lady was going through. Somebody come from out of town, oh, always use me away. Oh, I love her. You know damn well we don't go no f***ing no hell. Now, after that, we all were laughing about her situation. She laughed it off. She just needed a vent, whatever the case may be. I said, listen, man, at the end of the day, God loves you. God is putting your family together. And just remember this, when you are walking around with a positive attitude of gratitude, it brings this in your life. You get the right people. You get the right customers. You get the right mentors. You get the right sponsors and vendors. You get the right endorsements and referrals. I mean, do you want to deal with a person with an attitude or do you want to deal with a person with a smile? Here's what scripture says in Psalms about praise and having an attitude of gratitude. It reads like this. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Matter of fact, that reminds me of a Bible song in church. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. And don't think that a guy like me has never been through some pain, that's never been through some challenges, that's never been through some difficulty. I have. Eight years in the Marine Corps, born and raised here in the city of Chicago, dealing with the tough neighborhoods that I grew up in, dealing with the uh, bullies that we had in, in our neighborhoods, dealing with war, combat, two combat deployments, going through marriage, going through divorce, single dad, parent drama, all that jazz, starting a business. I've been through a lot. Maybe many of you have been through a lot more, but I just want to remind you, God wants you to rejoice because this is the day that he has made for you. It's up to you now to have an attitude of gratitude and what to do with it. One last scripture here before I finish off this point. It says here in Colossians, it reads like this. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. My friends, when you're thankful, no matter what situation, what scenario you're in, there is always a lesson to be learned. There's a moment for you to take a step back and say, okay, Lord, it's not going well for me right now. This is not happening the way I thought it'd be, but what do you want me to learn out of this situation? Because I'm thankful right now for this teaching moment. What is it? And usually with that attitude, God reveals himself to you in ways that you'd never imagine. Which leads me to point number three. Gratitude shifts your focus. Being grateful is the beginning of your inner peace. That no matter what's happening externally, inside you're grateful, inside you're happy, inside you're humble, inside you're asking questions, inside you're curious. And since you have peace on the inside, guess what? You don't need anything external like going shopping or buying things or video games or areas of alcohol and abuse to have you at peace on the inside because of an attitude of gratitude. I always say this, the greatest high in business, the greatest high you can ever imagine, the greatest high that you can ever experience is a high not of any external drug, but on the high of winning, on the high of reaching our goals, on the high of overcoming small challenges, on the high of reaching certain goals, on the high of coming through with your word. That is an awesome feeling to have. Let's read what King Solomon, the wisest and richest king who ever lived, says about gratitude in Proverbs, it reads like this. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. If you commit your work to say, God, here it is. I'm setting out this career, this business, this investment, this opportunity. I want you to do your thing on this thing because I'm doing it on your behalf. Yes, I'm gonna do my thing, but more importantly, I know you're gonna do your thing. Let's rock. And when things don't go your way, here's what scripture says in Romans, when attacks come your way. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's right, man. Good. Love, forgiveness are very, very powerful weapons. And lastly, as I wrap things up, being grateful also creates wealthier children. It helps you create generational wealth. There's a recent article in Business Insider that says that Teenagers who declared in their teens and early 20s, they declared that I'm happy and I'm grateful, tended to make more money by the time they were in their late 20s. If you are interested in creating generational wealth for your children, for them to embody this generational wealth habit, to take on what you started in your generation, you have to understand that your children don't care necessarily what you say, they care more importantly about what you 
do. And I hope you have an attitude of gratitude about that. You need to lead by example. So before I let you go, check out this video here, how a felon became a first generation cash flow millionaire with this most underrated habit that I just discussed in this video. And check out this other video here, how one biblical law that is never broken helps create first generation cash flow millionaires. And to give you a heads up, starting December 1st of this year, we are doing again Vlogmas series, a video every day on faith-based finance and how to become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire from the 1st to the 24th. We did it last year and we're going to do it again this year. And I'm curious for me, what topics would you like to hear most about? So that being said, guys, in this holiday season, he is a reason for the season. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Make sure you drop your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you're thinking because we respond to you. That being said, from Oak Brook, Illinois, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.